Oh. Hello, everybody. It's um, Giselle and Sidonia here. We are Christian women in the UK, and um, we had lined up for you today a special guest, um, Pastor Anthony, because we were going to talk about um, sort of the role of a Christian man. Um, but sadly, unfortunately, we've just had word that Anthony isn't feeling too well. Um, and so he needs to rest tonight. Um, so do you remember him in your prayers? Yes. But um, he does promise to be with, to come back to us at some point um, in the future. So we will try and reschedule that. So we probably still will have the chat just in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Giselle and I, as we always do. <laughs> <laughs> we love being put in the spot don't we <laughs> we do don't we yeah we really do and you know something that usually turns out to be our best discussions they probably do as well i mean we're yeah. just sitting there racking our brains going through the list of things that we have scheduled to, do, to um, discuss and also um sadly um goom can't be with us tonight because she has an exam yes. um i believe it's tomorrow so she has to study for that so again please do remember her in your prayers that everything goes well tomorrow for her yes. um so it's just Giselle and I in our cooking melting pot and we've been thinking about what to discuss <laughs> tonight and I think as always we have come up with a fabulous idea um we are going to talk about ministry we're going to talk about churches now I know that over the last few months we have had um some sisters within the group approach us um, separately to say how do they know um, that they're in a good church or they might be in a church where they've been at that church for a while um, but they either get a new pastor or the pastor starts saying one or two things that they start thinking hang on a minute that isn't particularly biblical um, or I can't remember seeing that anywhere in my bible or they get a new pastor and things change and they're just thinking mm, I don't really feel right in this church so I think we're just going to um, maybe just try and give you pointers um, as to how do you know that you're A, in a biblical church. Um, and also, we were also going to talk about ministry in terms of we're all called to go out and make disciples of all of the nations. So it's not particularly a pastor's job, it's a responsibility for all of us. So, um, but yes, G. Um, I call Giselle, Giselle um, of Pearls of Grace Ministries, I must say. <laughs> um, yes, Giselle, say so for those members that have either joined us new or maybe they're new to the faith and they're looking for a church and um, they're not particularly sure um, what they should be looking out for in a church. Um, what would you advise? What would you advise them to do? Well, I think the most basic advice that I could give anybody is that if it's not a Bible based, Bible reading, Bible loving fellowship, you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And you know, it has to be someplace where the Bible is. It's not diluted down and it's not changed to suit mm -hmm. other people's lifestyles. You know, mm -hmm. as as born again believers, we are to change our lifestyle to come in line with the Bible. Yeah. Not change, not change the Bible to come in line with our mm -hmm. depraved, idiotic, stupid <laughs> lifestyles. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, once you're born again, you change, you transformation, let the Holy Spirit change you, and your mm -hmm. church has to be, should be, a mm. good Bible-based teaching church. So, what is like one of the red lights, like if you know that people should look out for? Because, like, you know, I, I know like some people, some sisters in in the group have obviously been Christians for a long time, so they kind of know. Oh, okay, maybe this isn't the right thing to be listening to. But again, you know, there's so much out there on YouTube, yeah. on Facebook. You know, yeah. there are the Bible doesn't make it clear. There are wolves in sheep's clothing out there. Um, Big time. And, you know, the Bible also is very clear that there, there are wolves within our number, even within the church. Oh, um, yeah. There are, you know, deceivers in there. And, and it does make it clear as well that the enemy is roaming about like a, a roaring lion looking for who to devour. So it's very clear that in the in the end times, in the last days, we will see these false prophets. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we very much believe that we are in the end times. Um, so what should new sort of, 
believers or even maybe seasoned old believers that are sort of used to listening to different you know preachers left right and center what are the sort of things that obviously not an exhaustive list so by all means this is not prescriptive this no. is just you know no, yeah those this... kind of things that you'd listen to and go oh hang on i need to double check my bible um what are some of those red lights that you think people should look out for well i think the big one right away is that when uh churches leaders whatnot talk about there's more ways to heaven than through christ oh yes yeah i've heard that one yeah now that is a big one you know they're 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 talking about oh there's more ways to heaven so there is and there's not it says in the scriptures jesus himself said he arrived the way the truth and life and the more no man you know, no man come Amen. to the father except through me that's mm. it mm. plain and simple mm. so, so you and, know preaching salvation through other means really exactly and you know, we know that there's an awful lot of denominations even today that believe they're only going to get to heaven through the heart of the work here on earth means mm -hmm. they might get to heaven and that's wrong that, mm, yeah. that is totally wrong yes. and so yeah there, there, there are a lot of churches out there that mm -hmm. um yeah that it's okay. You, you you don't have to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior for your life. Mm -hmm. There's more ways to go to heaven. I have heard. I have heard a, a minister say to people that it's okay. You just come to church and you just listen to me, and you're fine. And that's not mm -hmm. right. Those people. Those people are oh, going no. to yes, uh -huh, most definitely. Oh wow. Um, so mm. and, and I have heard it with my own ears that is not hearsay or whatever mm. I have mm. heard that minister and it's people. interesting you say that actually because just tonight I was having a conversation with um, my kids um again about the same thing you know isn't the Holy Spirit just wonderful um, oh. I didn't actually think that we would be talking about this tonight but now you've said that we were having a conversation and I said to my kids um you know because my eldest is very inquisitive yes so, you know I said be careful because some people or preachers okay so the thing came about because you know we were talking about how popular certain churches are on youtube and social media which obviously for the young kids that's a big thing they're into social media so they'll look at you know a channel and go oh this channel's or this church has got two um views which is two million views and they go oh so they must be right um, and then they go to another channel and it's like, oh, it's only got 200 views. So, oh, that's not a very good church. You know, so we, again, you know, we were having this conversation. Like, God is just so wonderful. But we were having this conversation just tonight about, you know, the popularity of the mm. church or how popular the church is. Yes. doesn't necessarily mean that they're preaching the truth. Um, it doesn't mean that they're preaching outward lies, which is yep. what I said to her. But they might just not be preaching the whole truth at which point you know this the said child turned around and said to me well give me an example then because i said to, you know i said to the child that you know my our church for example is a bible believing church and you know we don't have millions of views um but you know it is a bible believing church and they do preach the word of god and sometimes actually people shy away from those churches because they don't really make them feel good about living in sin and most times people don't want to hear that the way they're living is wrong mm -hmm. um at which point the said child turned around and said to me well give me an example then <laughs> of stuff that these people preach that is you know a lie like they can't like just outwardly preach a lie like that surely somebody would call them out on it I said well I'll give you an example there's this popular phraseology that goes around saying you know God hates sin but he loves the sinners yes she went but that's true isn't it I said yes it is true he loves the sinners because you know the bible's clear is it John um, it says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Mm -hmm. um, but that whosoever believes in him mm -hmm. shall not perish, but have eternal life. I said, so God loves the world. Of course he does. He loves sinners. We're all sinners. Um, he loves sinners. But the only people going to heaven are those that believe in Jesus. Exactly. So yes, we're all sinners, and yes, he loves the whole world, mm -hmm. but the only people going to heaven are those that come to him. And then I said to her, but at that point, we are washed clean of our sins. Mm -hmm. 
God doesn't look at us as sinners because he looks at us through the blood of Jesus. So <laughs> yes, of course, God loves sin. And yes, God loves the sinners. But he's not saying that those sinners are coming to heaven unless they go through Christ. And I said to her, you know, what did Jesus say? She went, um, and I went, well, and then, you know, the child said, I said, well, what did Jesus say? She said, um, you know, he said, I am, I am. She then obviously the child completed it and said, you know, the way, the truth and the light. And nobody will come to, to the father except through me. Yes. And um, so whilst these people are preaching these kind of messages, they're not giving the full picture. They're not lying because yeah. technically what they're saying is true. God does love sinners. Yes, he does. But that's not the salvation. That's not the road to salvation. No, it's not. It's it's it's, it's really not. Jesus Christ. So it's just those sort of little things, either by omission or by misleading people, that people don't get the full um picture or, or, or sort of the full thing of the full gospel of the church yes mm. and and another one a big thing for me you probably know this do you use the tithing and offering oh. yes. <laughs> yeah do we, do we really want to touch on that one again <laughs> but i personally believe that if anybody's in a church where they hear more about tithing and offering than they do about living right with god and being right with god then they are in the wrong church big time big time yep because it is by obedience mm -hmm. and by your love of god and in response mm -hmm. to what he's done for you that you offer up all that you have as a response to that very 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 much so and you know another biggie i think too that shows you're in the wrong church if you and even the people around you, if the people aren't being inspired mm. Mm. and you don't and you don't see any spiritual gifts in operation, mm -hmm. except maybe for the leadership. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh -huh. you, <laughs> again, it doesn't say in Corinthians that the spiritual gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are going to be given, given out to ministers, pastors, deacons, elders, and all the rest of it. Mm. It's to everybody. The Holy Spirit oh, will, you know, he, 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 he will give them out to who he sees, not who he sees fit, but, you know, he'll, mm. he'll, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll give whatever gift to, uh, uh, to people. But mm. any church where the spiritual gifts are hampered mm -hmm. and there's no inspiration and there's mm. no, no growth. Like how many churches mm. all over the United Kingdom, all over the world, but just in the United Kingdom, have got all a generation of old people and there are no youth. There, there's, there's nobody going to that church maybe under 50. Mm. I think maybe some of those churches as well, they've become stuck in their ways, haven't they? Yep, and then big time. They're not reaching these you know newer generation of christians and, and times have changed and you will have to break certain technological boundaries um <laughs> so that you can reach some of these young people of so course. you know i think times have changed um but here's another big one for you that i think um you know i think people should be aware of so if you if you are going to a church and um you find yourself um, screaming hallelujah, praise the Lord and, and jumping up and down a lot more than you perhaps are thinking about your sinfulness and your heart towards God. Um, I would say you maybe need to look at the church you're in and the doctrines because um, the Bible's clear, the word of God is there for everything. It's for reproach, it's for edification. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it will reproach us. So there, there should be times in your life as a Christian or in your daily walk with God or your weekly services where the Holy Spirit convicts you of a sin that you've committed that mm -hmm. week, that night, the day before, you know, and you actually sit there and think, actually, you know what, this is, this is, this, like, this is sin and God really isn't happy and I need to repent of this yes. sin. Not saying you should be guilt-ridden and shame-stricken, um, but, you know, it's 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 a case of you need to be at the point where um you're not constantly going yeah praise the lord yeah it's not a rock concert um, nope 
you're there to be yes be joyful in the presence of the lord we're not there you know there's no guilt and shame bible's clear there's no condemnation in christ yes but there should also be times when you can reflect and you should reflect on you know because the bible's clear we should enter his presence with trembling he is yeah. a holy god we should fear him we should revere him. now he's done amazing things for us which we should be joyful about very much so but if your heart if there's no point in your church or your walk where you actually sit and think actually i have committed that sin yes actually i need to repent of that yes actually my heart is not right in this particular area actually yes. i'm struggling in this area and i really need the help of the holy spirit Oh, I need, you know, the help of the Christian community to pray with me or pray for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you're not in a church that inspires that, then again, you need to think. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Very much so. Yes. And you and a church, too, with no activities for children and young people. Mm. <clears throat> Pardon me, that's what I'm starting to say. There's, there's a lot of churches are, you know, the age, there's not very many people under the age of 50. So when that generation dies off, what's going to happen? Mm. They should be out encouraging young people and children in because mm. they, like it or not, they are the next generation. They are, aren't they? They, re they really are. Them. We need to be reaching them Yeah, where they are. I mean, that's a really big thing you said there because, you know, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day and obviously we, we're very fortunate that we're at an age where we've got the Derek princes and you know we've got access to mm -hmm. you know spurgeon and you know, oh, yes like and smith wigglesworth and yeah yes, yes. uh-huh we're, yes we're at that privileged position um where we have um access to some of these people you know billy graham who just died but there will come a point you say that the kids now well, A, not maybe even understand the language of Spurgeon, for example. That would have to be redone for them. Exactly. Um, all the people are going to die out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like Charles Stanley. I love the man. And I think, yes. You know, obviously, know. he's not paying me to plug him here. Or no, no, he, he's brilliant. I just took a short intake of breath there because, you know, oh, yeah, he's absolutely brilliant preacher. Him and Dr. David Jeremiah. Yes. You know, yeah, I and, just and I tell you what I like as well on Premier Christian Radio every morning. I think he comes in about nine o'clock. Dr. Michael Youssef. I love that man. I yes. really do. And you know another one I love, and he gets as fired up as much as I get fired up. Carter Conlon. Oh, oh he I gets don't know him. Oh, I'll send you a link to oh, Carter Conlon. Yes. I, yes. I, I I stumbled across him one morning many months, maybe a year or so ago, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It came up. I uh watch some teachings on a, a, a ministry called alpha and omega okay at, uh ministries mm -hmm. and he's usually one of the guest speakers there and oh, oh my wow. goodness me does he get riled up and oh he is oh yes he's brilliant <laughs> but when he's calmed down he's very calm he's, he's a lovely voice to listen to even mm -hmm. when he's riled up he's very very nice to listen to as well but yes yeah. so we're we're on the same page sister Sedona. we, we are, love the, we? We we love the, the greats yeah very and much I'll tell you another one for, for younger people i know we do um according to the statistics on our spotify i think um 40 of our audience that listen to us is under the age of 40 okay so, for people that are sort of the younger crowd maybe 25 and below um you want to check out mike pilavachi and okay. andy croft they have a, a youthful quote unquote ministry in london um i think they're in watford it's called they, their series that they normally follow is soul survivor but they're very contemporary so they okay. speak sort of youthful language and they connect with the youth i think that's mm. their primary ministry um, yeah but he's he's really good. Michael Lavarchi, he's Greek, but you know, and, and there's this other young man there, Andy Croft, they're really good. Um, and there's also somebody I came across, um, David Peterson. He's an Anglican priest, a young black guy, but he was just so refreshing. Mm -hmm. I came across him on TBN, um, and but he speaks like a proper young black guy 
like a youth of this age to yes. the point where my little boy so that the first time he heard him he went mommy how's that even how's that even a preacher <laughs> Well, you see, this is it too. We've got to be down to earth because I say there's Chinese, Japanese, mm. Portuguese, Lebanese, and Christianese. Mm. And not everybody speaks those languages. No. Especially not Christianese. No. And, no. you know, Christianese. So we've got to reach these kids, haven't we? The we've kids got to. We really got, got to. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, that's their language that they choose to communicate yeah. with their friends. Exactly. Um, you, know, you hear you hear sometimes you hear the youth talk and you think what you what did you just say because that just went over my head <laughs> but if they have somebody who can preach to them in that language then exactly. boom you know so the spot is open on christian women in the uk if there's any youth out there wanting to <laughs> come and educate us on your language <laughs> well yeah I, I i would love to uh learn a few more uh phrases and things for uh youngster because i'm still in the one hey dude High five. <laughs> <The> five. <laughs> and I know when I do this to some kids, they look at me like, oh, and I say, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, that's going to be funny. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a, you know, that's a good one. Um, but like, like, this, like this wee woman with the hair all curly and the war paint on, you know, and a twin set of pearls and things like that going, hey, dude, what a high five. <laughs> I'll be like, what does this woman think she's saying? <laughs> yeah, she's old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's refreshing. And it's good that because, you know, when God sees us, he doesn't see our age, does he? Um, yeah. You know, the Bible's clear. There's neither male nor female, nor Jew nor Gentile um, in, the, in, in, in God's eyes. And so we're all, yeah. you know, God won't look at you and go, oh, no, you're 18, you're too young, or you speak the wrong sort of English. We're all welcome into the kingdom and I think that's you know that's important that we all um try to reach people which leads us quite nicely into the second part which we're going to talk about is this thing of I think you must get that a lot don't you Giselle about people going oh no I'm not a pastor oh, I yeah. can't do that you know yep, so big time. give us some kind of encouragement for people who maybe think oh they can't do x or they can't do y I mean what is our mandate first and foremost as Christians what are we ordered to do evangelize yes. preach, preach preach the gospel to take 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 the gospel to all nations and to everything not every mankind but everything that has breath or every mm. creature that has breath that's why mm. i even preach sometimes the only congregation i have is my cat and my dog i preach to them <laughs> i'm serious i do um uh so you no know, we we are all and like you said there just a, a, few, a few minutes ago, that there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, mm. male or female, right? Mm. We're all one. We're all one in the body of Christ. Mm. Now, don't get me started then about female creatures, but 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 just just remember that one <laughs> that there's neither Jew nor Greek, uh, 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 slave nor free male man or woman right we're all mm. one okay um that's enough for that for tonight um so, so 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 on that you see when when christ at the passover when christ introduced the disciples to the uh communion mm. he didn't say there it's only pastors elders or deacons mm. can hold over the communion did he he he, okay. he he said when you do this do so in remembrance of me so that means we can all have communion anytime mm. anywhere any place mm. and it saddens me it hurts me it grieves me so therefore i know it is really saddening hurting and grieving my heavenly father that when you say to people um something like do you have communion at home <gasps> Oh no, mm. I'm not worthy. Yeah. That's like slapping Jesus Christ in the face that he mm. went to the cross to give you the freedom, like the veil of in, in the temple was ripped in two when he died, mm. so we could enter into the Holy of Holies. Mm. 
Mm. And for us to say that we can't have communion at home, we I need to have a thicker something off to, to do it for us. We're slapping Jesus Christ in the face. You didn't need to do that. Mm. Mm. You know, he, he gave us that freedom, so he did. We can mm. have communion at home. Mm. And um, somebody's putting likes going up. I see on the side of me, I hear likes are going <laughs> up somewhere. I, I must have said something that somebody likes. Um, so yeah, we we can, and it's it's nice. It's it's nice maybe to have a minister or an elder or something to mm-hmm. perform the Holy Communion for us, mm-hmm. but it's not necessary. No, it's and really- you know you know what's sad. I think because that's probably stemmed from you know the older denominations um, mm-hmm. so and Catholicism that have been around for heaven knows thousands of years or couple, at least a couple of thousands of years if not 1000 years um so they've sort of established that precedent and say so you then have the evangelical church or the protestants or the reformist churches mm-hmm. who have come and try to break that tradition um but in so doing we need to um always kind of empower people just like you said there and let them know that when jesus was breaking bread in the last supper he said do this in memory of me he didn't say and let your priest do this in memory, or let your pastor do this in memory of me. He said, do this in memory of me. It was an instruction to all of us, wasn't it? It was, um, very much and, so. And, and when, he, when we're told to go out, we are told to go out and make disciples of all nations. Yes. It doesn't say that the pastors, only the pastors. No. Should, because what is a pastor? Essentially, it's just a shepherd, isn't it? Yeah. You're meant to guide the flock. Um, yeah. But, you know, the flock are meant to bring each other along to stay in the herd. <laughs> I remember being told by a lovely old lady describing the fivefold ministry to me. Mm-hmm. And she said, your hand and your middle finger is the, lo- the, the longest finger. She okay. said, there's apostles and there's right. prophets. Right. And they call out the evangelists. Right. And then there's the teachers. And the oh. pastors. Right. The, the middle finger's the longest because the evangelist has to go the furthest right. to, to evangelize. Then they'll bring in a teacher to teach right. them and then right. the pastor to keep them all together. Right. So the pastor really is just like a shepherd, really. Keep people yeah. together. And mm. just if they do it wrong, slap them. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, so that, that that's the fivefold ministry. So mm. it doesn't say that an evangelist has to be a man or a woman mm. or a particular age or anything. Mm. Every every one of us, every one of us who receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives is an Amen. evangelist. Amen. Hallelujah. We, Amen. we, we, we are. Yeah. Now, okay, you know I'm an ordained minister and I don't really like to use my title unless I mm. have to. But um, first and foremost, if people ask me what I am, I'm an evangelist because mm. that's what I was called out to be as soon as I became mm. born again. And that's what I'll always be. I'll mm. be an evangelist right up until the day I take my last breath. Amen. That's, amen. That's, that's, that's and and here's, the, here's the other thing as well that sort of flows from this. It's this idea of um, sometimes people get disheartened because they feel like they're evangelizing and they um, maybe don't see the results mm-hmm. there and then. Um, and so they feel like maybe they haven't got the anointing because they feel like they have, they can't see God working. Now, um, you know, I know I've got my own views on this, but it would be interesting to just hear sort of what is what would you say to such such people? What would you say to people that maybe just feel, ah, oh, but I've been speaking to people and I'm not getting anywhere, or I never see anybody convert, and and you know, so they just maybe they they don't evangelize as much as perhaps they used to or they would like to because they feel like they haven't got the gift, quote and unquote. What would I say? Get over it. <laughs> waiting for that one seriously get I'm over it you long enough now <laughs> because you when i when i speak to someone mm. uh and i ask you, you you know i even talk to people i, I preach in the supermarket supermarket preacher yes I I know, said, that's, exactly, that's our exactly, nickname for you exactly exactly it used to be supermarket sweepers nice supermarket preacher and you know, 
when I ask somebody when I'm talking with them, I say, can I pray for you? Yeah. Sometimes to say yes, and sometimes to say, yeah, but not here. I think okay, I'll pray for you in my own time. Mm. Now, sometimes people are very receptive to hearing about Jesus and mm. his love for them. Other times they don't want to know. Mm. But what I'm getting at is when I come away from those people, I go, thank you, Lord, for giving me that opportunity that I was able Hallelujah. to plant seeds. Hallelujah. Because we plant seeds. Mm. Now we're not we're not going we will not know the true fruit of the seed we plant till we are mm -hmm. in heaven okay because mm. people are going to i'm getting goosebumps over here holy spirits on me we're, we're people are going to come up when we get into heaven people are going to come up to us and say it's because of you i'm i'm here because mm. you spoke to me in a supermarket you spoke to me in the school playground you spoke mm. to me wherever 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 yeah. and you will not see the result there in land but they will yeah. go away and then god will bring someone else across their path god will nurture those seeds and someone else might actually bring that person to salvation but you mm. planted the seeds mm. so be so be happy with the seeds that you're planting and mm. claim it in the name of jesus that when the people mean. walk away you know, I claim that in the name of, I claim the salvation of that person in the name of Jesus. I've mm. planted seeds. I am claiming their salvation. That's mm. it. Mm. You go, G. You That's go, it. G. That's it. Come on. Seri <laughs> seriously. You, evangelizing is a tough job if you're getting into it really hard. Like you. Um, mm. In many ways, I was blessed because I came to my faith when I was living in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I was thrown into Pentecostalism in the deep end of the pool. It was either sink or swim. And I swam. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was it. And at the church I attended, I met a lovely lady there called Cindy Brennan. Mm -hmm. And this lady is absolutely fantastic. She introduced me to street preaching. Mm -hmm. her, and as, and as, her and I used to joke about it. We worked the streets together. We did. <laughs> and it was absolutely brilliant. And she taught me about door-to-door -door evangelizing. Mm. And we would meet on a Saturday morning. And now this is still when my late husband, Papa, was in hospital. Mm. And you know, sometimes near death's door, I would leave and come out to uh, uh, go street preaching with Cindy. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there would be crusades and other church things all get together. Now, I didn't actually see it happen. But apparently a, a couple of people went to somebody's door one night and uh, they're at the door. And instead of people coming out and speaking to them, saying, no, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. uh, but they came, you know, we're, we're from uh, XYZ Church. Hold on. They closed the door and came back with a dirty nappy and chucked it in the people's faces. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Now, that's. There's worse persecution goes on than that. <laughs> and you, mm -hmm. that, that was disgusting. So it mm -hmm. was. But you've got to be prepared to take Look for that. Yeah. Mm. And you've got to be you've got to be prepared to take the rough with the smooth. Mm. And some people say to me sometimes, oh, gee, you know, people don't like me or uh, uh, people won't listen to me evangelizing. Not me. It's not about you. It's, it's really not about you. But people didn't like Jesus. No, this is look, true. Look what they did to Jesus. This is true. This is true. I mean, but you make a very, very good point there, G, um, because, you know, it is essentially seed sowing, isn't it? And, and once we come to it with that mentality, yeah. then, like you say, there will be people in heaven that will say, I'm here because 20, 30 years before I died, you spoke to me a certain way or you showed me kindness or... Yes you showed me the love of God or you prayed for me or something as little as that say so, yeah I think that's a very 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 important point for people to take away from this you're not called to um convert people that's not your job nope. that's the job of the Holy Spirit yes but you're called to plant a seed um, Amen. and and walk away from that and hand it over to God mm -hmm. like you say you know walk away from and just say thank you Lord for that opportunity to spread the good news to spread the gospel and i trust that you will you will bring it to fruition in your own time um, and you leave it with god it, it's not for you to to, to carry and, and burden around with so that's a very good point um and and also just for people to to also know that your life is essentially a ministry you do not need a platform you do not need a church your life 
is a platform, is a ministry. Um, yes. As sinful as we are, as um, ashamedly um, horrible as we are as human beings and fallible, there's something beautiful about the grace of God. There is something um, that draws people nearer to God when they see you live out a grace-filled life. Yes, exactly. And that is the ultimate evangelism. You know, yes. if, if people can go, none of this do as I say business, not do as I do. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. That, that doesn't work. Now, I know way back in my days before I came to salvation, I think I was like a female soul because mm. I, I gave street preachers and things a really hard time. That if they handed me a, I, yeah, I really did. You know, if they handed me a track, I would say, is that in recycled paper? And bless them, you know, I'm not proud of it, but you know, they would look at it and I said, well, you have to look at it that much. It's not. So you really think that this God of yours wants these trees cut down to spread mm. this. And you know, I used to do horrible things like that. I used to go out of my way just to annoy Christians on the street preaching. Mm. And that wasn't right to do, but you know, the seeds being planted. Mm. As a child, I was sent to Sunday school to get from beneath my mother's feet. And it was mm. the Elam Church in East Belfast mm -hmm. that I was sent to. Mm -hmm. And I remember as well, my Sunday school teacher, and we called her Aunt Tilly. Mm. And I used to look at Aunt Tilly and used to think, when I grow up, I want to be out like Aunt Tilly. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And uh, wow. That, that always stuck with me, so it mm. did. But then, sort of, you know, my parents moved moved house. We moved away and I lost... But the fact that you can actually still remember her name. Oh, yeah. How many decades later. But it gets better. I have left a real imprint. Get, yeah, go on. It gets better. It gets better. Yeah. Uh, the little Elam church on the Beers Bridge Road, uh, when I came back from living in Florida and a born again believer, I uh, found out that that little church had closed down, but they'd a purpose built place about three or four miles up the road from it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I did think about Aunt Tilly, didn't say anything more about it. And uh, I had the beautiful experience of being at the the new beer uh, new uh beersbury road elam church mm -hmm. uh for a service one night and uh me and my pals got there late and the only seats available were the front row so we ended mm -hmm. up sat in the front row and i'm sitting there thinking i wonder is aunt tilly still alive i wonder i wonder where she is and i stood up to go a few rows behind us to speak to somebody that shouted hello giselle Mm. And as I'm walking down, this woman comes through the door. It was Aunt Tilly. <gasps> wow. I just, I just, I just knew her right away, and oh, turned wow. away. I turned away and I thought I was emotional, and I turned away and I thought I don't know whether I should speak to her or not. Mm. And I went and sat back down in my seat, and my two pals with me, Lynn and Julia, said something like, "Are you okay?" I said, "Yeah, just somebody there I know. I'm going to go and have a word with them." So I yeah. went and had a word with her and I said, Aunt Tilly, she said, yeah. And she looked at me and she said, yeah, my name's Tilly. I said, I don't know if you remember me or not, but my name's Giselle Sterrett. You used to teach me Sunday school. And oh, she remembered. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, I'm a born again believer now and uh, been did around a lot of corners. First she did. And she burst into tears. And I said, why are you crying? She said, well, she said, She'd often wondered whatever happened to the children that she taught Sunday school to. Oh, bless her. What? She said, what? Just to have one person stand in front of her and say that that helped and all and the rest of it. She must have been very old at that point. She must have been at well, the end of her life at that yeah, point. Well, she's like 15 years older than me. So, yeah, she, she, she would have been. This was only back in 2012 this happened. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, she, she, so she's very she, old, but for God to give yeah. her that evidence of the work that she has done in this yeah. lifetime. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, because sometimes some people have to wait until, you know, eternity yeah. to find out. But for mm -hmm. God to actually bring you back there and show yes. her that. Yes, that's a real answer to yeah. prayer for her as well. Tilly made a big impact to me, and that was seeds planted. 
Mm. Now, those seeds were planted when I was like nine. I'm 69 now. Those seeds were planted when I was like nine. 60 years ago. 60, so 60 years, years ago. Yes. And you and I've been around a lot of corners and over a lot of bridges and under a lot of bridges and everything. <laughs> then till, 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 uh, till now. And you know, I only came to know Jesus in mm -hmm. 2008. Mm. And um, yeah, so it took, it was, I don't know if many other people were actually able to stand in front of Tilly and mm -hmm. you know, profess their, their faith to, 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 to them. But even if I'm the only one, she can pass away. Okay. Yes, knowing that. And she will find out the rest of them when she's in heaven. Praise she will. Jesus. Yes. That is just wonderful. And I see watching us live as one of my dear pals, Glenda Archer. She, she was my sidekick long, 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 long time ago. Way back mm. when we were in our twenties. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, hello, Glenda. <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's good to have you. But look, G, it's been a wonderful um session. We have gone down memory lane. Sixty yes. years down memory lane. We have spoken about the future of ministry, which is the young ones, and how we have a responsibility and almost a duty to impart a, them. a duty big time yes yes yeah, big time to impact them and empower them to go out and, mm -hmm. and live out their faith and and sort of um, pass the baton you know very much so them. so we have much that duty so. to see and we've also you know talked about how it's important that, that for us all to share the gospel wherever we find ourselves mm -hmm. um, and, and to use our lives as, as a minister and That's to it. people and, and to call people to Christ say so you don't have to be an ordained pastor to lead no. people to God no. um, you know, we we've talked about you know how to identify whether or not you're in um, a, a Bible believing church but you know on that point let's just make it clear that honestly just pray and the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you if you ever sit in the church and you're thinking oh I wonder if that's in the Bible or I wonder where mm -hmm. that's from mm -hmm. that's it quickening you to check it out so yep. don't ignore it pull out your bible and double check whatever it is you've just heard that you're not sure about or Big if time. you can't do it there and then make a note um, mm -hmm. in a little notebook which is why you know taking a notebook to a sermon when you're listening it's not just for making notes that you want to remember it's for making notes to check things out later as well exactly exactly yes um and, and the holy spirit will quicken you so pray um and and like you say when you're born again you do receive the holy spirit and he will he will lead you right and he will lead you right to god if you let him um so you know if you're sat there and you hear something you think oh i, I wonder if that's in the bible make a note um and then pray about it and the holy spirit will lead you if it is in the bible he will lead you to it if it's not he will show you as well and then you can decide yes. whether you want to stay in that church um or leave Yes. Um, but no, it's been a it's been a wonderful chat, G. I've completely enjoyed I've, I've it. I've enjoyed it again. They're getting better. <laughs> they are, aren't they, just <laughs> yeah. I I'm gonna to have to start talking properly again because all these silly words I make up, they're getting, they're becoming too common. They they really oh, are. <laughs> they are betterer that's, and worsher. <laughs> I know. But um let's just close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to have a laugh and to discuss uh, matters that are close to our hearts but no doubt close to yours as well help us lord every single person that listens to this whether on the live or on the playback to um to be empowered to go out and sow those seeds lord trusting that you ultimately will do the increase and you those seeds will bear fruit help us lord to um rest assured in the knowledge that we are called to lay those seeds and those foundations. But ultimately, you, Lord, are the one who convicts and you, Lord, are the one who changes mm. hearts to turn back towards you. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your provision. And ultimately, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Oh, yes, In Jesus' Lord. name, amen. 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 And are you going to give people a taster of what's going to happen next week? Oh, next week. Next we week. The lovely. Yes. Italy, Carlos with us. Mm -hmm. Doing a series on divorce and remarriage. And we haven't published part one yet, but we probably will now because I think we just need to follow it through. But next week we have Carlos. He was a lovely gentleman who has agreed to come and speak with us about his yes. experience of marriage, divorce and remarriage. And um, so rather than just have us women talk about stuff from a female perspective, we thought we'd get you a Christian man 
<laughs> he's actually lived it. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yes, uh-huh. A real, a real life expert. Exactly. And Carlos has so graciously agreed to, to come be with us. So we look forward to speaking with you next week, Carlos. Um, sure do. We're glad to have you. If you have any questions beforehand, reach out to Giselle or myself. But if not, we will see you next week. Yes. Hallelujah, we will. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye for now.